So our next guest is Thomas T.J. Lofton, and he's going to give us some practical steps on how we can empower ourselves and how we can practice Kujichagalia, self-determination, in a step-by-step -step process of personal and economic empowerment. So Brother uh, Thomas T.J. Lofton is a global business leader and industrialist. Uh, Brother T.J. revolutionized the low-riding auto industry during the years of 1991 to 2009 and as the CEO of three multi-million dollar companies. Lofton founded three successful global businesses, including Express Gold Plating, Compton Wire Wheels, and Molded Suspension. Thomas was a manufacturer, distributor, and exclusive dealer of dozens of auto parts and accessories. And um, I said was, but he also is. Uh, his classic cars led him into the film industry as his cars were featured in music vis videos, movies, and television shows. He was invited to be on the set of NWA's reunion movie, Straight Outta Compton, and Driving While Black. Lofton has been featured in countless lowrider and classic car magazines, highlighting his industry genius. Today, Lofton still manufactures and ships auto parts around the world, and now has a production company called Loft 10 Productions. Through his production company, Lofton travels across the country giving workshops, business boot camps, lectures, and providing business coaching and consultations. Lofton also develops educational programs for youth by planting the seeds of entrepreneurship. Lofton is dedicated to educating the masses and building business owners, not employees. So we're welcome and we're glad to have you back in studio with us. Brother Lofton, T.J. Lofton, welcome back. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, Marty. Brother Kier, Thank you, brother. greetings. Yeah, it seems like you've been very busy, brother, in the recent, um, you know, recent days. Uh, it seems like to me you really launched out here in this new year, 2017. Um, and I know you've been doing a lot of presentations because oh, yeah. I've been getting the emails telling me about them <laughs> all, all around the city. Right. So uh, can you just give us a start off by giving us a summation of the message that you've been giving in your recent presentation, just the overarching idea that you've been trying to present to the people. We've been speaking a lot about uh, basically creating wealth and starting businesses. we got to get out of the mindset of getting a job because too many people are being laid off from their jobs. We have companies moving out of the country, moving out of state, and people are just in shambles. So the message has been solutions for 2017. We're gonna work through these solutions of things that we deal with everyday practical things. Real estate, uh, you know, a lot of people's real estate, they're dealing with gentrification, redevelopment. You got people whose houses went from 300,000 to now they're worth a million and they don't know if they should sell and if they, where should they go once they sell. You know, people dying, leaving their children millions of dollars in real estate. So we got a lot of issues in the community that we need to deal with. Okay, and so you happen to give them some step-by-step -step, uh, training on how to do that. So how would a person begin the process of developing life skills to improve their economic conditions? It's, it's very simple. I mean, literally, you can go on YouTube nowadays, and, you know, I want to learn how to weld. <laughs> Boom, it pops right up, you know, tells you exactly what to do. You know, so many people like myself have been putting our classes online, you know, so it's like literally you can go online and take one of my webinars on how to do this, how to be a land developer, how to be an investor, how to get the eye of the investor, you know, take a class online, I'll coach you or something. Yeah, you know, you, in fact, I'm, I'm familiar with certain seminars or workshops that you've done where you've actually had seminars for youth where you just taught, taught them how to change a tire right. and how to do just basic things right. in maintaining their cars. This stuff is important because right. a lot of people don't know it, right? You know, people don't realize the wealth involved in learning how to work on a car. You know, back in the days, uh, the change of pair of brakes was 39 bucks or something. Now it's like, depending on the car you got, it could be a thousand dollars. So it's like you turn around and you learn how to change brakes, and you're charging a person a hundred dollars, a hundred bucks to change his brakes. 
You do one set of bricks a day, you'd be all right. Three thousand dollars, a hundred dollars a day is three thousand a month. Most people at working nowadays don't make half of that. Mm. So we got to think differently, right, right brother? We got to start thinking in terms of, you know, you know, gaining the skills that we need, and then utilizing our creative abilities to find solutions. Right. right? Yeah, that's really very uh -huh. essential knowledge for for us to know for us to understand so that we aren't just sitting back waiting on somebody to save us. Right. You know, it's you're absolutely right. And I've noticed that I've been watching this a lot lately. You know, matter of fact, I've been call, being called out to speak a lot because I've been talking about the college system is failing. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, now all of a sudden you have ITT closed down, 40,000 students kicked out, 8,000 teachers laid off. And I mean, it's a list of them that's going on. Macy's just closed down or something. They're laying off thousands of employees. Toyota's leaving the state. California closed, scaling back all of its, its uh, offices around the country. So people are being forced to go back into entrepreneurship of learning some type of life skill. So by me being, being well versed in you know construction, the auto industry, I know where the money is. So I tell people all the time, it's like, okay, they don't understand, okay, well, how can I make, I, you can't find a job as a mechanic. Nobody's going to hire me. i got to have a certificate, a degree or something. I'm like, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Nobody's going to hire you. But if you start a business, you literally can start it out at the trunk of your car, start it in your driveway, you know? And it's like people are charging top dollar to go in and do an oil change. You know, I'm a, oh, you need, you need valve covers, the uh, gaskets are leaking. We're talking three or $400 for a couple hours of work. Well, you know, like our brother that came before you, Brother Calvin Kennedy, talking about sovereignty, you know, we got to become sovereign individuals. Absolutely. But don't you need a license to do that kind of stuff? Don't, doesn't the government want to say, hey, look, you can't change no brakes unless you got a license? See, the government, sets, <laughs> the government put, they created this big box, and it's called, uh, you got to have a degree. So if you want to work at, at Pep Boys or if you want to work for the dealership, you have to have a degree. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? They're not the only ones hiring. Mm -hmm. If you don't want a job, you go start a business, and then you just have to get you a business license, $34, you well, know? Well, what about brothers and sisters who have a record? Is that going to hinder their ability no. to start a, a business? Not at all. In fact, most of my uh, business, a high number of business owners are convicted felons, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know that. They have no choice but to go into entrepreneurship. Well, well what are some steps for starting a business? I like to get down to the nuts and bolts because people need you sometimes to hold them by the hand and tell them to go from A to B to C to D. So what are some steps if you say if a person wanted to start a business? Find out what you want to sell. And the easiest way to do that is like I did. I seen a bunch of cars being worked on. I knew a lot of people in that industry. So I asked one of them, I said, hey, can you hook me up? <laughs> you know, can you hook a brother up? What, what do you mean by hook him up? I know you sell this for $100, but can I make some money off of it? Because I know a lot of people too. And the guy said, yeah, I'll give it to you for 50 and you tell him this, this, and this. He gave me a little script. So I would go around to the community and tell my friends, hey, I got these. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, it's like, boom, oh, I need four of those. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, oh, he got this too. He got these. He got those. All of a sudden, I'm making $3,000 a month off of somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important that we align ourselves with businesses. Now, it's easy for us to turn around and say, can you help me and tell me what do I need to start my own business, my own shop? And that guy will be your coach, pretty much. So then we look at within our, our own sphere of people that we yeah. might know or people we could get contact with. And then, and, then, and then what are the kind of things we would ask them? You know, we, we know we want to start a business. And, you know, I guess we would need to focus on our own passions and our own interests. But then, you know, we make the connection and then what? Say that again, please. I would ask them to be my coach. Like, for example, if I'm a, a rapper or a singer or something like that, I'm going to find somebody within the community that may be in their garage that has the DJ system set up, you know, the, all the hookup. And I'm going to ask them, can I, can I intern? You know, I want to start a business in this. Can you teach me how to do this? I see you in your garage doing it at your mom's house. And he shows you what to do. And the next thing you know, how can I make some money off of what you do? He's going to say... Bring people over to the, to the house that all the aspiring rappers, comedians, singers, and I'll charge you fifty dollars an hour, and you charge them a hundred an hour, and you're gonna make money like that, and then eventually, I'll help you start your own business on the other side of town. 
because there's millions and millions of people that's interested in anything and everything. Sort of like what the brother uh, Calvin was saying, that we have to practice our sovereignty in relationship to each other. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm interested in you adding more to, to that. Because when I think about your work, right, yeah. um, it's, it's really about entrepreneurship and, um, and really looking at how you can generate you know, money, right? And so the thing that comes to mind is the issue of sustainability, right, mm -hmm. around relationships. And saying that, you know, I have a skill, I'm going to keep a business, I'm going to start a business. But sometimes you, a person might be rough around the edges. Sometimes a person may not have the people skills. They have a technical skill, but they may not have the, the people skills. How do you propose or, or what do you propose a person does to make sure that those skills um, get developed and they build the capacity to be able to have that and, and keep it? You, you know what I mean? Okay, I got you. I look at myself. I'm, I, yep, you guys see me speaking a lot everywhere. You probably say he talk a lot. But to be honest with you, I'm really kind of nervous. I'm not a big talker. Mm -hmm. So I send my assistant in to talk to people. You know, she talks. She, everybody loves her. They just gravitate to her or others around me. So I just sit back and stay over here in the corner. And she goes out and finds all the customers, you know. So we got to build up our networking. Mm -hmm. Find people like I'm not a good talker, but you are. So mm -hmm. I found someone who can talk. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a really great uh, uh, engine puller, so, but I knew someone who was. And I said, hey, can we work together? And it pulled us together. So mm -hmm. that's how I became sustainable to understand who is good at the things that I'm not good at mm -hmm. and learn how to cooperate with people. And a good friend of mine said, I wish I had not been a gang member all those years because I'm scared of certain people that look like me. But I realize now, because I have a business, I need for everyone to know what I do. Right. So that he can find, so that he can find the different people that can put into what he's doing. The term is called what? social building, social capital. Absolutely, right? absolutely, I say, brother, absolutely. I, say, brother. I, I want to interject the idea, the concept that one of the brothers <coughs> in, the, in the center, brother Myro Haru, shared with the center as it relates to building money or, or accumulating money, and he, he he explained to us that sales is 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 a is one of the best way to actually multiply your right. money because you can, by, through selling, you can really uh, get an exponential growth on your capital much faster than, say, putting it in the bank. You know, you may get one or two percent, but if you create a good sales platform, you can actually d duplicate your money or get 50 percent back on your money faster. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about that just briefly? Because I want to get into. Um, some other things uh, as it relates to this coming age of Trump. So I want to use this time to, you know, for you to talk about some of the opportunities coming up. But just briefly. I think sales is like investing in something, right? Mm -hmm. you you got to be able to invest in something that's out there to sell, you know, to be able to learn the language of going out and talking to people mm -hmm. and, and, and spending time with, what do you like? Okay, I, you, I like, I noticed you have this uncle on your shirt. So mm -hmm. I'm, I have some affordably. You know, would you like to buy them? That is a language within itself, you know. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm not a big seller. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I don't like talking and communi communicating with people, really. I don't know how to really close the deal all the time. So what do I do? I have people do that for me. But he's right. That's a huge business, and people pay great money. Business owners pay a lot of money for people to go out and make the sale for them. I see. So, so, so now I want to just get to this other, kind of take the direction take the conversation in another direction, you know, we don't have a whole lot of more time. What are some opportunities that, that may be coming to us in this so-called age of Trump? I, I've heard you talk on that. So okay. you yeah. The age of Trump is, you got to look at what, what does Trump do for a living? Every president <laughs> opens up the door for his people. Donald Trump is a land developer, meaning he's building buildings. He's building uh, hotels and casinos with his name across the top. He has golf courses. So that means he's a he's a builder. So if you look at what's happening in America, we are going through mass development all over the country. We have 101 construction projects in downtown LA alone. In each building, 101 buildings, high-rise buildings, we're talking $800 million and up per building. Mm -hmm. Now, we, didn't, we haven't even left downtown. Now we're talking about Google, Tesla, SpaceX, all these corporations all around the community. You, what are we talking about? They just tore down the Jordan Down projects and they invested $1 billion in that project. 
that, you can buy all the watts up for $1 billion. But now they're going to build, put a billion dollars in there. So what we should be doing, learning right now, what we should be putting our children in is how to build. Because you may not, I'm going to say, repeat myself, you may not find a job in construction or carpentry, but you will definitely be able to create a business in those. I'll repeat myself. You go get your carpenter license, you learn how to build a house, you learn how to build anything, you may not find a job working for anyone. But you will definitely be able to start a business out of the trunk of your car. Wow. Why do I say that? Because in 2002 to 2006, I was in Palmdale. That was the biggest, fastest growing uh, real estate market in America, in Palm, in the Antelope Valley, California. And what happened was they had so many, they had so much construction going on at the time, there wasn't enough people to supply the demand. So literally, they, were, they had people who were being scammed for just calling people off a of Craigslist. I just need anybody to come over here and add on to my house. I need anybody to come build a house for me. I want to build a new house because it's taking people, I don't know if you guys remember, houses were getting multiple offers and it was taking people like a year and a half to find a house. They qualified for a brand new home, but they could not find one. So, so tell us about how we could go about getting a house built and, and then just like, and then contrast that as a viable option compared to purchasing a pre-existing house. Well, I tell people all the time, you, when you buy, okay, for example, if you find a, a house, you know, I know you hear the term, people don't, banks aren't lending, for example. Mm -hmm. Banks aren't lending. It's hard to get money to buy a house now. Mm -hmm. Well, why, why they're not lending? If you find a house and the house is 300000 all of a sudden 20 people go and try to buy it. That's called uh, multiple pe multiple offers. You got mass offers being offered on the house. So now the house ends up going from 300000 to four eighty five. Mm -hmm. So now the bank's saying, well, the house is only worth three hundred. But you just bid on it, and now you say you're going to pay four eighty five. They say you're going to have to pay out of pocket that other the balance of that. I mean, anything over one hundred eighty five over the three hundred. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you get stuck. Now the house is upside down. It's not worth four hundred eighty five thousand. It's just you are willing to pay that much. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any equity in the house. So if you decide to sell the house today, you're not going to make any money off of the house. But if you say I'm going to go find me some cheap land, I'm going to build me a house. You're going to build that house if you know the if you know the recipe like I do, which I teach. You can build that house if not a quarter of the cost or half the cost. You know what I'm you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can build a brand new home for the quarter to half of the cost that it will cost you to buy that home brand new. Now here's the difference: when you build the house brand new, it's going to register as a 2017 built home, and they're going to say, "Okay, what did it cost you to build? It cost me." $200,000 to build this house the way I wanted it. So now all of a sudden we go and have it appraised upon completion and guess what? The house appraises at six fifty. dollars So you know what happens now? That's building equity. You have equity. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> so the bank will say, hey, in, in perfect, in the way it's supposed to go, the bank will say, hey, well, we noticed that you have at least $300,000 in equity in your house. We can convert your construction loan to a construction to a permanent loan, a, com a regular loan. So, and we can give you three hundred thousand dollars cash and tie it into the mortgage, and you'll just have one payment. Now, here's the deal: that three hundred thousand dollars that you can get in equity may only cost you an additional eight hundred dollars a month. But if you were to walk into the bank and say, "I need to borrow three hundred thousand," they will not give it to you. I say. Well, we're going to pause for a moment. This is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. This is some nuts and bolts information that I wanted the listeners to get. But we're going to pause for a moment and do our announcements. We're going to come back to you. Okay. Okay. 